Hello, and thank you for joining me while I discuss the Engineering Academy at Cypress Creek High School. There are two engineering teachers. The first teacher is Rory Conrad. He has a bachelor's degree in industrial arts and technical education. He's been a school teacher for 15 years. He's been involved with the construction and manufacturing industries. He understands welding, woodworking, etc. We also have Nathan Baker, who has a master's degree in mechanical engineering as well as an MBA. He's been a school teacher for five years and was a mechanical engineer for 15 years with experience with military jet engines, power generation, and commercial food service equipment. So our first year introduction to engineering design, the students are going to learn to model different designs using Autodesk Fusion 360 CAD software. Uh, they're also going to get the opportunity to take an industry certification exam towards the end of the school year. They're going to get hands-on experience with some tools and building and bringing some of their ideas to life, including dial calipers, 3D printers. They're going to build one of the projects that's going to be building cardboard launchers and creating carnival games as well. So why do we get our students industry certified? Well, the national certification does prove that they have the skill set that we talk about with their 3D CAD modeling. I also have all of my students add that to their college and scholarship applications, as well as any resumes. It's very important to show that they are um, uh, competent within computers and to have a proven aspect to that. Uh, students also earn a sense of pride. It's awesome seeing these kids with their certifications. Whenever they pass, they're all giddy and stuff. Over the past five years, the Engineering Academy at Cypress Creek has gotten 260 certifications on different CAD software packages. Here's one of my classes that ended up getting their certifications. You can see the, the group in front were the ones that got it the last time. They get three chances to pass that certification. You can see the wall across the back. Um, the, the, the certifications in white were those that passed the first time. The ones in green back there are the ones that passed a second chance. And then the ones in red were the ones that got it on the last try they had. And we had a kind of a competition between the various classes up there. You can see those smiling faces that are all proud of their accomplishments. So the second year is principles of engineering. We're going to expose uh, your student to, to quite a few different engineering disciplines. They're going to get what I tell people is like the first two to three weeks of a college course on different aspects. They're going to learn about robotics and programming. We program using Robot C, which is a combination of C++ and Python. It's going to learn about the, the fundamentals about electricity, how to calculate amp voltage and resistance. Uh, they're going to learn about simple machines, mechanical advantage, etc. They're going to learn about some energy sources. They're going to get the opportunity to build a solar paneled car. They're going to see hydrogen fuel cell in action whenever they split water into hydrogen and oxygen gas and use that as a propulsion method. They're also going to study fluid dynamics. I tell my students by the end of their second year, they will know if they want to become an engineer or not. Uh, we cover a lot of mathematics. It's very math intensive. And the students are exposed to lots of different aspects that they will be encountering in engineering school. Here's some of the students uh, working in their robotic stuff, building various subsystems and things. Uh, the vast majority of our projects are group based. So students are learning about teamwork communication, how to get along with their peers, and all of those types of soft skills that we continue to improve upon. Third year is computer integrated manufacturing. They're going to learn about manufacturing processes and different philosophies, uh, Toyota process, just-in-time engineering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're going to design virtual manufacturer assembly lines with some of our software. They're going to learn and continue to expand out on doing robotics. One project is going to be the pneumatic assembly line. They're also build a transfer system, which is a, a conveyor system that has to stop at multiple discrete points automatically based on sensors. They're going to get some hands-on experience uh, you, making a project using a CNC mill, and they're also going to design and print up a design with their 3D printer. Uh, they, one of the nice projects they work on is an aut autonomous car. So we have a track laid out with electrical tape, and they have to design a car that's able to stay on that track the entire time. Here's some of the students with their little proud projects after they finish with the CNC mill. So engineering four is engineering design and development. The students are going to choose a problem that they would like to solve. So they get a choice on this. Uh, we tweak it a little bit if things are off course, but uh, they get to figure out what problem they would like to, to solve. And then they're going to spend an entire year designing, building, and testing a solution to that problem. They're going to document their entire design process. There's a year-long portfolio that they'll pull together at the end of the year that showcases all the work from the beginning to the final. 
Uh, they have formal presentation at various stages within the, the design process. Uh, so you get there that experience standing in front of people and giving a, a professional caliber uh, presentation. Uh, they're going to communicate with experts in the field to develop that expertise that they may not have. So they seek for those people outside that might be able to provide some insights into their project. They're going to build and test a prototype, and then they present their final results either to a group of engineers or uh, a couple years ago we had just some other people from industry that were able to to make it for us. So they get to give their presentation and present all their findings to a set of adults. We have a couple of after school clubs as well within the program. We have our Lady Coyote Engineering Club. We have weekly meetings with the young ladies within the Engineering Academy. Uh, we talk about things like women in STEM. They get to use hand and power tools. We break out the the bench grinders and the drills and everything else, show them how to properly, safely use those things uh, and get them the hands-on experience that they may not have otherwise. We talk about how to apply for school, uh, taking advantage of everything and making sure that they are uh, getting as many uh, opportunities open to them as possible. We've had various guest speakers. We had a, a third-year pharmacy doctorate student from UF come give us a presentation. And last year, we had a couple of female engineers from a local construction firm that also came and talked to the young ladies. Here's a picture of last year's group. Uh, here they are using various tools. In the bottom right, you'll notice them taking apart an old broken hot water heater. So we reverse engineered that, took it all apart, saw how it was work. Um, bottom left, you'll see us supporting the Halloween safe zone here at the school. Uh, the girls use this as a fundraiser. We raise money for our engineering scholarship fund. I didn't mention that earlier. But uh, last year, we were able to give $1,000 worth of scholarships to graduating seniors who were part of the Engineering Academy. We shoot for at least 500, uh, but we keep trying to improve that every year. So we fundraise and try to give scholarships to those who've been in the program. We also have a Vex Robotics Club. This is our second year competing. This year, we have actually juniors and sophomores who are the co-leaders of both teams that we have. Uh, they divide up into sub-teams where they have people who are predominantly builders, some of them that work on the coding aspect, and we use the VEX V5 system for that, as well as those who drive the, the robots around because there's strategies and other plans that they have to do and make sure that they are able to, whenever it gets to the competition, we have the best people behind the joysticks as possible. This year we'll be competing in January of 2023 at the Steinbrenner High School on the Warrior Robotics Competition. Here was last year's robotics team, some of the students. And we really focus on lots of different aspects, not just within engineering, but we want them to be successful here at high school. Uh, we have a coursework. If someone is truly interested in having a career in STEM, uh, we tell them the classes that we would recommend they take, including stuff like AP Chemistry, AP Physics, AP Calculus, and other courses so that they are prepared for whenever they hit college, they can hit the ground running instead of struggling or in remedial stuff. We also have a roadmap to make suggestions on what they end up doing and when they do it to prepare for college, such as when they should be taking their SATs and ACTs, suggestions on the number of volunteer hours they should have at the end of every school year, when to apply to college, when to visit to college. So we've kind of laid out a, a rough roadmap to use as a guide for their family as they go through stuff. We are continually pushing uh, our students on preparing for their standardized test scores, SATs and ACTs. Over the past few years, we've seen a lot of students, a lot of great students not earn the Florida Bright Future Scholarship predominantly because of their standardized test scores just aren't up to snuff. So we continually encourage getting on Khan Academy and other type things to improve those things. And we're always looking at uh, predominantly Florida Bright Futures is one of the best scholarship opportunities out there and making sure that many of our kids are able to accomplish that. We also review, I review all the students' grades in all six of their classes. Um, I'll look at their English or science or math, other electives. I look at everything and we call them up and have a little powwow, um, congratulating those kids that are doing great. And those kids are slipping. I'm like, you know, what's going on? We try to find out if they need some tutoring, if it's too many hours at, at their work, or what's going on that they need to, to get them back on track. So we're monitoring that as students are going to provide an extra little layer of um, oof to keep these kids on the straight and narrow. 
We also look at various career plannings. We're going to do some career research where the kids get on Indeed.com and look up different jobs, see what entry-level jobs are available, where they're available, what they pay, and what requirements they have that they need to accomplish to be able to get jobs like that. We recently went on a field trip to USF Engineering, which was amazing. The students get to see some of the research there, what it was like, and talking to other, uh, you know, fairly new recent graduates who are now at USF working uh, towards their engineering degree. We've had guest speakers from industry as well as the military come present different information to the students because I want my students to be as prepared as they can and as knowledgeable about all their options, keeping as many doors open as they can so that whenever they graduate or get close to graduation, they can make that final decision on which area they want to head to. We push college applications. We recently finished up November 1st was the uh, early registration deadline for many colleges here in Florida. So pushing the students to get that common app completed, get their essays done, as well as getting their letters of recommendation. And we write a lot of letters of recommendation. I think I've done about 12 so far this year, and I'll probably have another 20 or 30 asked of me over the next few months as we, as we get further and further into the school year. So we're always pushing the kids to do well to exceed and to excel and to continue to continue growing. And finally, the basic summary, the Engineering Academy will introduce your child to the ups and downs of the engineering field, talk about the, con, the pros and the cons. We'll, we'll teach your kids to improve their math skills. We're going to continue to push math. Uh, engineering is so math intensive. If kids are really interested in that, they really need to, to continue to grow from a math standpoint. We're going to continue to, to push them to, to investigate various professions, look around to find their niche of what they want to do in this world. Um, there's a lot of decisions that have to be made in high school, so we try to present as many options to them and to have them as ready as it is so that whenever they graduate, they know where they're going to head versus a, a typical kid who shrugs and says, I don't know. Uh, so we'll cheer, we'll cheer on your child whenever they make successes, and we'll also encourage them whenever they start to to show a little bit of slipping in terms of stuff to, to see what we can do to get them back on track because we want all of the students who pass through the Engineering Academy to be successful. And what our end goal is, is we want your child to look back 20 years from now and just say to themselves, thank you, Mr. Conrad and Mr. Baker, as they continue to apply the lessons that we've taught them uh, as part of the Coyote Engineering family. Thank you very much for listening.